Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you guys some tips and some advice that I have if you're trying to homeschool and you've got a baby or a toddler in your house. Now we have homeschooled from the very beginning. We are starting our seventh year of homeschooling and each of my kids are about roughly two years apart from one another. So pretty much I have almost always had a baby or a toddler during our homeschool years. Actually, this is our very first year where I'm doing a little bit of school with all four of my kids. My youngest is four, so we're just doing some very basic preschool activities, nothing crazy. But this is the very first year where I actually have something that I intend to do with her each day. But first things first, I just want to remind you that this is a busy season in your life. And that's exactly what it is, just a season. This isn't going to last forever, so this too shall pass. And the other thing is, just give yourself some grace for the days that are less than perfect. When your plans go awry, it will happen, I promise you. Everything is not perfect and rainbows and, and goes exactly how you want it. Um, I actually want to read a quote. I know I've shared this book before. I love this book, Teaching from Rest by Sarah McKenzie. And there's actually a quote I have uh, underlined. And honestly, I underlined a lot in this book, so it took me a second to find it. Um, but I want to read this to you because it just epitomizes this whole idea and it actually has a quote from C.S. Lewis, which I love, but it says, whatever is getting in the way of your plan for the day, the toddler's tantrum, the messy bedroom, the sticky juice leaking all over the fridge and into the cracks of the drawers, the frustrated child, the irritable husband, the car that won't start, the cake, the dog dragged under the couch, whatever that intrusion into your grand plan for the day is, it's also an opportunity to enter into rest. And this is the quote from C.S. Lewis that I wanted you to hear. The great thing, if one can, is to stop regarding all of the unpleasant things as interruptions of one's own or real life. The truth is, of course, that what one calls the interruptions are precisely one's real life. The life God is sending one day by day, what one calls one's real life is a phantom of one's own imagination. And as she goes down the page, it just says, surrender your idea of what the ideal homeschool day is supposed to look like and take on with both hands the day that it is. Rest begins with acceptance and surrender. And I just love that, the idea that we have this idea this in our, in our minds of what our day should look like. And so when things come up and when things go wrong, we just think that it was this horrible day. It was not supposed to go that way, but maybe that was exactly what God needed us to happen in that day to maybe teach us patience or to make us humble, anything to make us more like Jesus. And I always think that's such a great reminder because I can so easily be thrown off from the interruptions in my day. So if you have a newborn or a young, a young infant or a toddler, just give yourself the permission to just do the very, the very basics, the minimum, the three R's. Do some reading, do a little bit of writing, do a little bit of arithmetic. You don't have to do all of these grandiose art projects and science and history. Just do the bare minimum during this busy time. Again, it's just a short amount of time. You can choose if you want to make up things during the weekend when the dad is home or you can do school over the summer to you know kind of catch up you know there's no rule that says you know school must end on may 31st there are tons of families who school year round and that's a perfect option if maybe you do have a busy season in your life where you have a young infant and it's a little harder to get all of these things in just give yourself permission to scale back and do what you can do in your family Another piece of advice is that you might have to change this view in your mind of what the perfect school day looks like, what the ideal school schedule would be. You know, I had in my mind that I wanted to wake up, we'd have breakfast and we would complete our school and we'd be done by lunch so that we could go to parks and the zoo and do all these other things. And I realized when I was starting with my oldest, he was four, and my second child would have been between one and two, and I couldn't do that. I couldn't accomplish all of those things. So I had to kind of throw out the window this idea of this perfect school day and realize that I couldn't, I couldn't accomplish everything by lunch. 
And honestly, I would get super discouraged because I had something in my mind that I wanted to do. And the way that our lives were in that season, it just wasn't possible. And once I threw that out and realized that's not going to work right now, it was like this weight was lifted off my shoulders. In fact, one tip that I have, if you have a baby or still a toddler that naps, maybe even they're napping in the afternoon, is to complete your school your schoolwork while that infant or toddler is napping, even if it's in the afternoon. Once I made that transition to doing our school in the afternoon while our toddlers were napping, I felt like the school time went much more seamlessly, where less interruptions, less things happening, it got done quicker because I wasn't distracted with the baby or the toddler. Even though I wanted to be done by lunch, that just didn't work. So we shifted, we completed it after lunch while they were napping, and it was accomplished in such a short amount of time. So if you can, use that as an option. Try to do your schoolwork during the nap times. Now my second tip would be to have a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time with your toddler or your infant before you try to go and work on that scheduled school time. I found that as my, my kids got older, they were more in the toddler stage, if I gave them some focused one-on-one -on -one attention, that they were more apt to go and do a little bit of alone or quiet play where I wasn't needed. So we were doing things like reading books and doing puzzles, playing with Barbies, playing with baby dolls, playing with Legos, playing with cars, whatever it was, I was just giving them my very first attention. It was right after breakfast. We had a, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of just very one-on-one -on -one play. And it was kind of like I filled their cup and they were able to entertain themselves for a little bit so that I could focus on the other kiddos and doing their school. Now, that obviously works if your kiddos can be trusted to play by themselves or you know they're not gonna get into something that they shouldn't be getting into. So if they're not there, I have another couple of different scenarios. So if they're not able to be on their own, play on their own and be trusted to be on their own, then I have a couple, like twofold answer of what to do. You can involve them in your schooling process. So when you're teaching maybe the, the older kid, you could pull out, if they're working on a worksheet, make a photocopy of it. If they're coloring, give them a coloring sheet. If you're reciting work, have them recite the work with you. Whatever the older kid is doing, just involve the younger sibling. A lot of times they, they're like, I want to do school too. I, when, when, I mean, Eden did this all the time. She's like, when are you going to do school with me? And so a lot of times I would make a photocopy or give a you know coloring sheet to Eden and just say, okay, here, do this. And she would sit next to us and she thought she was doing school with her older brother. And a lot of times we were reciting definitions to different things and she would just sit and recite those definitions with us. She thought she was doing school. In reality, it was just keeping her busy while I was still able to focus on school with her older brother. Now, if you're doing that and you find that they're losing interest or they are becoming a disruption to the older sibling because they're starting to take over and they're a little too loud, I have an idea for that as well. So what you're going to want to do is maybe create an area where you have some just predetermined, pre-planned activities that you have on the ready for that kiddo. So when you have that area, some recommendations that I would have is, you know, maybe making them low on the shelf. So one that they're, they're easily um, accessible by that child. So they're not high up. You don't need to leave and go get them for them. And they're also set aside for just school time. You know, it has that sense of novelty that, oh, we can pull this out. I never get to play with this, but I can when my siblings are doing school because it's my school. And so it's exciting to them because they can't always have access to it. It's only during school hours or school time. And if you find that they start to get a little over or losing interest in those things, you can always switch them out and change them up every month or two weeks or whatever you find is necessary. You can just have, you know, keep a couple things out and rotate them around with some new activities as well. So now I just want to share with you some different activities that I have. And some of them, I kind of made them into two categories. I have the messy activities and I have the non-messy activities. Well, 
they're probably all a little bit messy because they're going to be getting things out and you're probably going to have to help them put them away. But we have, okay, messier activities and less messy activities, we'll say. And um, if you're like me, I kind of have to prepare myself for these messy activities, right? I don't like a lot of mess, a lot of glitter and a lot of all this Play-Doh and all the things, but my kids love them. And so occasionally I do relent and let my kids play with them. But I am going to give you a few of these suggestions, things that are easy to pull out um, and the kids do love them and they will be entertained for a good amount of time. One of those things are just simple like watercolors, paints, um, hand, you could do the, the finger paint. Some of them are like clear paint and as soon as they put their fingers on the paper, it's that special Crayola paper, it turns the paper color. But this is something that I recently pulled out to keep even entertained. And all you need is just like a little cup of water, a paintbrush, and then all of the watercolors are up at the top. And it's it's not super messy. I mean, there's, there's the potential for mess when they spill their cup, but it's not super messy because all the paints are on the sheet and I can just pull one out and hand it to her and give, you know, give her a couple and it'll keep her entertained for a good 20, 30 minutes. So that's an idea. Another one, a simple one is Play-Doh. Um, we do have a Play-Doh bin. The kids know they're not allowed to get that out unless I have given them permission because it does turn into a big mess. So Play-Doh um, is a very special occasion in our household. Maybe you are better at allowing your kids to play with Play-Doh than, than I am. Another example of something that I've done before is I've taken like a good sturdy baggie and I've put it in like some shave gel or some hair gel and maybe like a few little like plastic animals or fish and and as they can move those around in the baggie I do tape off the top of the baggie with some duct tape so they can't just open it but it's another sensory activity that allows them to move the little animals around in the gel they can you know make shapes or letters or things in the gel with their finger as they're writing on and that's a really cool activity as well Another one that we have is Orbeez. So obviously I would not recommend these if your kids like to put things in their mouth or if they're super young, but Eden just absolutely eats these up. And I, honestly, I've had, this is a huge bottle and it takes forever because these little, these little bees, you know, when you put them down in water, get, you know, a much bigger. And they love just to, again, sensory play. You can make lots of sensory bins. They could be out of Orbeez. It could be out of rice. It could be out of beans. But if you have like a little Tupperware and you put some things down in them, the kids just love that sensory, that touching. Um, these are fun. Again, can be messy, but just gear yourself up for them. I don't have them readily available all the time. It's kind of one of those special occasions and I'll make them and have them set out and ready on, on in the morning for when I need to keep Eden busy. Another example that I have are just Dua Dots. Um, so these are super fun. They have lots of colors of these Dua Dot markers, but as you see, when you take off the lid, it just kind of has like, it looks like a little bingo marker, but then you can print off lots of little worksheets like this off the internet. And then the kids just work on stamping in those circles. So good hand eye coordination. And then, you know, just your run of the mill, like little worksheets, you can Google tons of like toddler and preschool activities online. You can do like coloring sheets and they can do some tracing. There are these. So if, if you're okay with them working with scissors, they could do some cutting practice and they're cutting along the dotted lines. And again, just more, um, you could do do a dot or you could color this worksheet. I mean, you can do a quick Google search and find lots of worksheets. And at one point I had printed off just several different things. These all have to do with like letters and then different things like, you know, Z was for zebra, just different things like that, that they, I have available if I need to keep someone busy. I just pull out a couple worksheets and they can kind of go at it. All right, now I want to show you a little bit of the less messy activities. Now, again, I don't mean that you're not going to have to do anything because you're probably going to have to help them clean up if they're like my kiddos. They suddenly are super tired and can no longer function to help clean up after they've done the activity. But it's not going to like get paint or anything or little Orbeez or Play-Doh all over your floor. 
So some activities. Now these, a lot of we've acquired over several years. We've gotten them for like Christmas gifts, um, different things like that. So we didn't go out and buy all of these all at one time. We've accumulated them over the course of four kids and over a long period of time. But little, little things like this. So this is just a little drill where they can make designs by drilling in the little uh, screws into the little white board. They really like that one. Let's see, we have, I know I've shared these before, counting and sorting bears just it's amazing these things they can do a lot of things with these bears and I use them a lot and they like to play with them as well you know it could be something as simple as a puzzle where they're just working with a puzzle in the room with you they could be puzzles with letters like this so they've got little I have a little bag of letters and then they're gonna put the correct letters in the um, puzzle here we can use, um, we have the pattern blocks that you can put on these designs. So I have our pattern blocks in a jar and they can get out these little boards and put a design together. So those are fun. Let's see, we have another little leapfrog puzzle. It's kind of like, what was the game? Well, I can't remember what the game's name is. You can probably remember. But you push down this and then you set the timer and you're working uh, against the clock. And the goal is to get all the puzzle pieces on before it pops up. And it's kind of funny because it usually scares my kids as they're doing it. Um, that's a fun one. We have little games like this, the Bananagrams, where all of the little blocks are just letters and so I let them match um, letters. I'll say like put all these letters in a pile and all these letters in a pile and they'll just do some sorting with the letters. We also have this little leapfrog contraption here, a little leapfrog game where you can put in the letter and if you turn it on it'll So it goes over each letter and their sound. So that's a fun one to have around as well. And then just a few more things we have. We have um, beads that have like a shoelace. So they have a pattern that they're following and then a shoelace that they're, again, fine motor control working here to put and make the pattern with the different shapes, the different colors and using the shoelace with the string. They really do like that one, that one's fun. We have a um, super pie sorter. So the pie has different fruits and different colors. And so they can sort the colors, they can sort the fruits. So it's just a fun one. That one gets pulled out a lot as well. Let's see, we have a couple more. We have this one, which is fun as well. They have a little um, board that they put this on and then you have little buttons that you're gonna put, well, I chose the wrong color. So I put the green in the green here. And then I put yellow buttons here, orange here, and the blue and the white, or the eyeball. So that's like a little button sorter. Again, they're just making the pictures. And then we have just your regular color cubes. So they've got different color cubes, and then you're gonna, again, use the cards to make different matches. So that one, is another fun one there's a creative color cues and as a last resort guys you can always just flip on a tv show a, you know on a kid appropriate tv show they can be educational you know i'm not gonna sit here and say just turn on the tv and throw them in front of the tv and let them watch tv all day we don't do that in my house but we do use it when appropriate and in those times when i was so tired and i had a newborn and i had a toddler and i was up all night Give yourself permission to let your kids watch TV if that is something that is okay in your family. Now, I'm not going to tell you to do that if you don't like TV, if you don't watch TV in your home, but if it's something that you're okay with, it is okay. You can put on Curious George. You can put on Super Why. You can watch Wild Kratts. You can do... What are some of the other educational shows? There's lots of them. The Magic School Bus. You can put those on and your kids can learn through watching those cartoons. And you can sit and, you know, be able to make sure that they're not watching anything that's inappropriate. But they can be educational and they can be good. 
allow yourself to, to use that as a tool if that's something that you need, if you need 20 to 30 minutes to accomplish something with another child. So again, give yourself grace. Ask the Lord for new mercies every day when you wake up. Just ask the Lord to help you through your day. This is a season and it will pass and things will get easier and things will get better. I promise. So if you guys have any other recommendations, anything that would be helpful to anyone else, go ahead and post those in the comments below. I'm sure that that would be helpful to someone else. And until next time, guys, have a blessed day.